Friday, October the 20th, 2023, 7.16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is episode 231 of McRae Live. Five years ago this month, we've actually passed it. Five years ago this month, this month, Halloween 2018 was released. Where were you? Were you excited about it? How do you feel about it five years later? How do you feel about it? You still feel the same as you did when you walked out of the theater in 2018? I was fortunate enough with Bruce Dale to see it at the world premiere here in Toronto at TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. And then I saw it again in, uh, in Hollywood at, at the Chinese Theater with Louis Lecca from The Nerd Report. Shout out to Louis. And uh, yeah, five years. Five years, ladies and gentlemen, five years since Halloween 2018. Uh, Man, oh man, how do you feel about it? You know, I remember the excitement was there. It was building. It was exciting. You know, it was, uh, I mean, it was crazy. You know, I mean, John Carpenter was back. Nick Castle was back. Jamie Lee Curtis was back. With Blumhouse. Blumhouse, the place to be when it comes to horror movies. And um, <laughs> uh, there was a lot of buzz. The a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz. Um, and, you know, the lead up, that lead up from about the the fall, well, that, that whole year, from the fall of 2017 to the fall of 2018, of course, that's when I really sprung onto the scene here. As I've said many times in the past, I've actually had this channel since 2006, but I never really did anything with it until 2017, thanks to my girlfriend who was uh, pushing me to you know, come on here and, and, and do this. If it wasn't for her, I, I wouldn't be doing this. And, uh, and that's the truth. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's that, it's that funny thing where, where it is, here you are. Uh, I, I remember one of the first videos I did was just me talking about what I would do with Halloween. And I think there were two videos and I think I released them in like the spring, like May or June of 2017. Then my channel kicked into another gear and I know the video it was. It was September 2017. I think it was around there. And it was the announcement that Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back. And that's when I remember when I did a, I did a video on it. Not a live stream, because I wasn't doing live shows then. I just did a video on it. And I was recording on my phone, and I had my phone here in front of me. I wasn't even, you know, I didn't have the cameras and the mics and anything. Just had my phone. Uh, and I was talking about how Jamie Lee Curtis was back. And that video, I don't know how many views it has now, but uh, I remember, probably not too much more, but I remember that it got like 5,000 views or 3,000 views or something, which for me at that time was ridiculous. It was like, like I was used to, you know, it, if I did upload a video, I might get, you know, 400 views, 500 views, right? This is back when I also had like 900 subscribers. And, uh, and it got like 5,000 views. And it was that video that where, where people really started to kind of um, discover me, I think, or at least, I mean, listen, there are some OGs that have been around since, you know, my little Halloween fan film shorts from, you know, <laughs> 2009. But generally, I think that's where people really started to, started to discover me. And I was like, wow. And then that, that really, that was the video that for me, even though I was talking about Michael Myers and Halloween in May and June of 2017, and I had posted a couple of videos, it was the Jamie Lee Curtis video from the fall of 2017, September, that kind of kicked my channel into another gear, I think. And, uh, and then I just started to kind of, people really liked my shtick and, and my, my, my sort of, uh, well, not everybody did, um, but uh, certainly, um, uh, and I remember that um, I, I believe I was one of the first people 
to predict that, and I'm not saying this for any sort of, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, um, gloating or anything like that. I just, because anybody could do it if you knew what to look for. But I remember, I believe I was one of the first to predict that they were going to ignore the events of Halloween 2. And I came to that conclusion, anybody could have come to that conclusion because it was the way that the synopsis was structured on the Halloween movies website with the announcement that Jamie Lee Curtis was back. I forget what it said, but it was it was in the language of the synopsis. But it wasn't, you know, on the nose either. It, it was a carefully worded, carefully woven synopsis. And if you read it and you didn't think too much about it, you'd go, oh, okay, cool. Like we knew it was going to be a sequel um, uh, to either the first or the second move, or we knew it was going to ignore, I think like, I think we knew it was going to ignore Resurrection H2O, but we didn't quite know what was going to happen. And I did a video and I remember saying, look, they're going to, I, I, they're going to ignore too. They're going to ignore too. And I got called every name in the book. Oh my God. People were, and Halloween 2 is my favorite sequel, but people were like, oh my God, fuck it, all this shit going on. I'm like, I'm telling you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That doesn't mean that. I'm like, no. And like, where are you getting this? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who, who's this new guy? Who's this new guy? And, and I just was like, no, I just, I, I'm telling you, I, I think I'm going to. And um, it was the way it was worded. And I forget what it was, but uh, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I, and I don't think it's a very, you know, thin limb either. Uh, I'm going to say that I, yeah, I think they're going to ignore it. And sure enough, like, I don't know month or two later it came out officially that 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 they were um and i think that helped i think that helped sort of i think what it did was being able to predict that i think even though anybody could have done it there was nothing special about me doing it it was just me paying more attention to the language of the synopsis and i'm not saying that nobody else saw it either i'm just saying that at that time um when I came onto the scene, I, I was focusing more on, on, uh, you know, the symbolism and the cinematic language and the deep dives of the original Halloween and Halloween 10, all that kind of stuff. I was doing something that not a lot of people were really doing when it came to Halloween. Uh, so I think my, again, I think my being able to hone in on the, that language and just the way it was constructed. I just thought, you know what? I think this is, I, I'm, I'm pretty, it's, it's, and I think that helps sort of people take notice. Oh, this guy's kind of, you know, he's perceptive. You know, he's he's picking up on these little things that, that the average person may not. Again, I, d I don't say that in a, in a, in a sort of, uh, you know, uh, braggadocious way at all. I say it because I remember that time. And if you follow me for any length of time, especially since then, you probably remember that too. I got a lot of heat for that. Uh, there were people making posts, yeah, well, this Dave McRae says, they're not going to ignore two. They're not going to ignore two. Anybody that thinks they're going to ignore Halloween two doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Why would they ignore it? Why would they ignore two? Uh, that... Seriously, it was all over the place. And I remember going, okay, yeah, no, you might be right, but I think it's going to happen. And then sure enough, they did. And, you know, but uh, anyways, I start the show by setting that up because that's where it came from. Like, that's where it kind of was. And, and, and I really sort of had the, you know, like, you know, people were talking about their favorite movies and their rankings and their favorite masks and all that. And that's fun. And that's great. But I, I remember like, I really, like, I remember there was a video I did where I, um, uh, I think this is from 2018, but I did a video where, um, and there's, look, I would love to continue to make videos like this, but once you've done it, you've kind of done it unless you want to kind of do a refresher maybe. But I remember, I remember there was a video I did. I forget what video it was where I was talking about the symbolism of Michael Myers. And I was drawing these connections, you know, these analogies and, and again, talking about the cinematic language and, and how Michael is utilized in the original Halloween and, and, and how like, you know, he's like a storm on the horizon. And that's why, you know, you see him during the day 
day, you do see the mask and him during the day, but it's always at a distance. You know what I mean? And and he's getting closer and closer. And if you pay close attention to every time you see Michael, he's closer and closer to the camera. You know what I mean? He's across the street. He's by the bush. Then he's in the backyard. You know, and he's getting closer and closer and closer. But, you know, he's like that storm you see in the distance on the horizon, slowly rolling in. And then by the time it gets to nighttime, then you see his mask close up as he lifts his head into frame on the phone. That's because the storm has now arrived. And I was talking all about that shit. I was going hard into the paint. And I I don't want to say I'm the only one, but I don't think there were a lot of people that were doing that. Uh, that were like really drawing those analogies and and using that, you know, symbolism and all that kind of stuff. And I, I loved diving into it. So I think for me, and I only speak for myself, I, I think that kind of helped me to stand out a little bit. Um, and, and, and of course, you know, again, with the good comes the bad, of course, because I'm a very opinionated person. So, <laughs> so I had a lot of people, uh, of course, not liking me either, but, um, but it was fun, man. I mean, it was a fun ride. And, and, uh, and then of course I met some, you know, great people like Cody Leach and, you know, the Wham guys and Jimmy Champagne and Drum Dums and, and, uh, Barry, you know, uh, from Wolfman's Got Nards and, uh, just, you know, other people in the space who, who are, are just so good at this. I mean, again, and I say this and I absolutely mean this, you know, what they do, I mean, the, the, the content they put out and the content they produce and how often they do it. And even like Cody Leach now, especially, I mean, he's full time now. He's a movie reviewer. He's not just a horror guy. He's, he's one of, you know, he's a movie reviewer. So, uh, but the, the stuff he does and he puts out all this, like, I mean, I mean, these guys are amazing. I mean, I, I never wanted to make a chant or to, to, uh, I never had a goal. I just needed a place to vent and talk about my passions. That's really all it was. And then it's turned into this. Um, and like I've said many times, if I was smarter, I would have asked people to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, smash that like button or smash the bell, hit the notification. But I, I don't know. You know I, see, I don't even know how to say it. Um, and my channel may be, may be bigger, but but it's funny because it, it, it was just a really interesting time and getting to know those people uh, and that kind of stuff and 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 sharing in that passion, that Halloween passion. And and they're just so good at what they do. I mean, Jimmy Champagne is just rocking it on his channel. I mean, he's so good. And, and, and um, uh, you know, the Wham guys, of course, they have their, you know, identity. And, and uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's great. You know, it's it's great to see everybody successful and doing their thing and 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 you know being passionate and and talking Halloween and and you know it was a lot of fun to 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 sort of find those people because you know I didn't really have those people. I mean, I, I mean, I know obviously I know a lot of film people, but uh, but like that real hardcore passion for Halloween, um, you know. Not not too much in my in in my sort of personal life, so to find others online and you guys as well that are watching and that kind of stuff and and it was just really cool, you know. It was a really cool experience to to because I didn't know what I was doing. I just needed I just needed to vet, like I I used it like a diary, like I just I I had all these thoughts of hearing this news and I just needed to get it out there and then people kind of liked what I had to say and and. Uh, you know, but with it, I, I I knew that when I really started to pick up steam, I knew that, you know, with it comes the, you know, comes the people that are not going to like you, obviously. But um, but that's, you know, neither here nor there at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, just that, that build up to 2018 was so much fun, you know, and, and uh, just a lot of, it was just fun. Like it was just so, um, and I remember the very first live stream I ever did, I... It was like two computers ago because I've since upgraded twice. Um, but it was like I don't know if you I don't know if you guys remember. It, I had like trouble, like the um, the um, uh, like there was an echo and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on with the echo and all that kind of stuff. Like what the hell's going on? Uh, anyways, it was a disaster, a total disaster. But um, but it was fun, you know. It was fun and and. Uh, yeah, just a lot of good memories. And then, of course, being able to go to the world premiere um, of Halloween 18 was a lot of fun. There's a, 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 
a video on my channel. If you YouTube Dave McRae Halloween World Premiere, uh, it'll pop up. It's like 20 minutes long, and it's it's from that day. It's myself and Bruce. We drive into Toronto. We get something to eat. We walk around downtown Toronto, uh, and then we head over to uh, to the premiere, and, and um, it's a fun video. I think it's got... I'm surprised it doesn't have more views, actually. Well, not so much now because it's old news, but... Um, I think it's got maybe 20,000 views, which is a lot. But I thought because it was like the world premiere, I thought maybe it'd get a little more. But nonetheless, um, that was a lot of fun, you know, to to be able to attend that. Uh, and just, yeah, that that whole buildup, that that buildup, that excitement, um, it was it was awesome. It was it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And it was fun to be a part of it. And I know it was fun for you guys as well to be a part of it. And it was fun for me. I mean, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about YouTube as well. I mean, you know, it's it's very different jumping, you know, from just watching. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a tech savvy person anyway. It's not like I'm grandma trying to figure out how to work everything. But it, 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 it was a different experience when you make the decision to jump in and really make a go at it not as a job or anything, because again, I have my, you know, my voiceover work, but, but in terms of just making a real go at it, it was, it was a very different thing. And, and it's, it's, it's really cool. And we've grown. Like I said, if I was smarter about it, if maybe I was more into doing reviews of movies and, you know, I would have a bigger channel and I would structure it differently. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I never, had a goal. I never, I just wanted to jump on when I felt like jumping on and just talking about something that, 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 you know, uh, ignites my passion for talking about it. Not that I wouldn't be against turning this into a second job, but of course, you know, that would require, you know, if it would become a second job, that means it would have to, you know, I'd have to be paid for it, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'd have to, I'd have to start structuring things a, a whole lot differently, you know, and, and uh, maybe uh, turn another room in my house here into a studio space and then have people, you know what I mean? I'd have to structure everything a bit differently. And at this moment, I just don't have the time to do that. Um, but my hat goes off, my hat goes off to people who, who really make a go at it. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So Halloween 18, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for humoring me over the last 10 or 15 minutes as I went down memory lane and how I jumped onto the scene here with Halloween. But it was a lot of fun, you know? It it was. And um, I remember when, the, you know, God, I remember when they announced Nick Castle was coming back. That was like, what? And I remember um, it might have been from my video. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, um, but I only say that because like now, you have to understand, now there's a Halloween, and I say this with all due respect, I think it's awesome. I'm not, I'm not, not throwing shade at it, you know, at anybody, uh, but now there's a, uh, you know, there's a Halloween channel for every, you know, dog in the, you know, on the entire planet, right? I mean, I mean, there's hundreds of people talking about Halloween now, and, 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 all that kind of stuff, which is awesome. I think that's great. I've had a few people reach out to me and say that channels like myself and, you know, the Wham guys or whoever inspired them to start their own, which is amazing. Um, but at the time, back in 2017 and 18, there was, there weren't a lot of channels talking about Halloween. There's, of course there were horror channels, but I mean like, you know, there was a few people that, that sort of rose to the top uh, and really sort of carried that Halloween news. I would be one uh, Cody Leach at that time. Now, of course, he's more movie review, you know. Um, uh, well, not really. Actually, you know what? No, I take that back because Cody's always really been movie review, not just horror. But certainly he was included in that. Uh, and then, of course, you got, you know, Lee and then Wolfman's got Nards. And, and I think Champagne came up maybe the next year or something like that. But anyway, you know, it was just a lot of fun to to see it and, and, and to see it unfold. And, you know, the movie came out and I remember going to see the movie. I was excited about it, watching the movie. And when I left the theater, I was disappointed, but I didn't hate the movie. I didn't hate the movie. I just was disappointed because you know, my expect, Oh, that's hang on. <laughs> boop, boop, back the truck up. Beep, 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 beep. Got to tell the Nick Castle thing. See, this is me going off on a tangent. This is why 
I probably wouldn't make a good, I wouldn't make a good movie reviewer. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, although it depends. So, um, I remember when, when it was announced, Nick Castle, I made a video, not a video on this subject, but on a video on the subject of Nick, of, of Nick Castle returning. And I remember saying something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing, but I said, and I meant, I'm not throwing shade at Nick. Uh, it's just, it's the truth. I, I remember saying, you know, Nick is, is older now and he's, he's a little rounder than he was, you know, 40 years ago. Um, I wonder if he's, you know, because at that time, when ha at that time, there was no James Jude Courtney. When Nick Castle was announced that he was coming back, if memory serves, it was like, oh my God, Nick Castle is back. And we all thought that he's just back playing, my he's Michael. Like he's going to don the mask and play Michael in the whole movie. And it wasn't shortly thereafter that it was announced that, no, 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 James Jude Courtney. But they made a big stink about Nick Castle because nobody knew who James, James Jude, you know, Courtney was. I mean, if you were, you know, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, maybe. Um, and again, that's not throwing shade at, you know, at James. But when it comes to Halloween, the name Nick Castle means something, right? So they, I rem they had like a press release. Nick was in the movie for like eight seconds. And there was a press release when he was announced. You know what I mean? And, uh, well, I don't know if it was an official press release, but certainly it was covered by all the major sort of, you know, horror uh, spots. And, um, and I and, and then I remember it was after that that Nick Castle uh, posted a video. Do you guys remember this? Posted a video of him running on the treadmill. And he was running on the treadmill in a Trick or Treat Studios Halloween 2 mask. I don't know if you guys remember this. It would have been back at like maybe the fall of 2017, something like that. Because uh, they were getting ready to shoot the movie in January of 2018. And... I, he said, I don't know if he said this or if the caption said this or, or if he said this to a, something, he, he said, he said something to the effect, something to the effect of, uh, don't worry, I'm getting into shape or, or something. And some people like, some people, I can't, I can't speak today. Some people reached out to me at that time and were like, do you think that, you know, it's because of your video? And I was like, well, first of all, probably not. Um, but if it is, that's kind of cool. And and two, I hope Nick takes it in good fun. <laughs> you know, because anyway, I, 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 um, but that was that was fun. You know what I mean? There was a lot of fun things happening in and around that time that was really cool. And but I was disappointed uh when I came out of the theater. I was disappointed. And um I didn't hate the movie, but I was disappointed. Uh, I, like many of you, were, you know, obviously the Dr. Sartain twist, um, I, I felt shoehorned in. That doesn't mean that, that there, that, it has really nothing to do with Sartain, with Sartain's motivations and everything to do with more of the timing of it and how quickly it was abandoned. Um, I think maybe if they, I heard today on the Slaughtered Lamb movie podcast with Frank and Darren that uh, they interviewed Christopher Nelson and Chris Nelson said something to the effect of that. Yeah, he said there was more to that in terms of more to his character, uh, either more they shot or there were certain there was more that was written that didn't make it in or something to that degree. And Chris had said something like, you know, perhaps maybe if we had not cut that out or that had been included, the twist in the moment would have would have played out a bit better. Now, again, it works for some people. There are some people out there that it totally works for. And then there are some people out there where it doesn't. And I'm one of the ones where it doesn't. It and 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 that has nothing to do with not understanding Sartain's motivations. That has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with more with the timing of it, and sort of it didn't feel uh, it didn't feel organic. It, it felt shoehorned in. Um, and I and, and of course I'm not the only one that that feels that way. There's a lot of people out there, not just Halloween fans, but you know, a lot of very smart, intelligent, film savvy people that also feel that way, that understand story and structure and writing that feel the same way. So, um, and Chris even said, yeah, you know, I, 
I get what you're saying, right? So I, I think that obviously was an area where, and for me, it had nothing really to do with Sartain putting on the mask. Um, I, th it, I don't know if I would have done that creatively, but that in and of itself is wasn't really a huge issue for me, although I don't think I would have done that. It was more just the timing and then all of a sudden it's abandoned and it's like, it, it, it felt like, it felt like, oh, by the way, we need to get rid of this plot point and we need, you know what I mean? There was that. And of course, just all the things I've talked about, you know, in 18, um, I think it's a good movie. I've, I've said this from the very beginning. I think it is a good modern day slasher movie. I don't know if it's a great Halloween film, although in comparison to the other two movies in the trilogy, I do think it's the best in the trilogy. And, and I do think it holds up. And when I say a great Halloween movie, I'm being that purist nitpicking at certain things, uh, that character continuity, that character DNA that I would have liked to have seen carried over, you know, and the example, I always use is there's, you know, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can present Michael in the closet, right? You can, you can have, you know, Julian say, oh, go turn off the light. And Vicky walks over, opens the closet door. There's Michael Myers. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. And that's nothing. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. And that's what they did. Or if it were me to help with the character continuity in terms of, of, of what we expect of this man who is based on the guy from the original film from 1978 what would be his style what does he do what's his what's the character you know continuity and there's an there's a there's an opportunity here to 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 have some moodiness some suspense uh rather than just a quick cheap jump scare that was ruined in the trailer by the way uh now that has nothing to do with david gordon green okay uh if it was up to david gordon green i you can bet your ass that that would not have been in the trailer um but the unfortunate part is that moment was ruined in the marketing you know, we know how Vicky's going to die. We know when she's going to die. And we know that she's going to die. Uh, oh, well, potentially, right? Um, and so there was any sort of suspense you were trying to build with that scene was completely eradicated. I mean, it's just gone because you destroyed it in the marketing. For me, how I would have handled it is, is I would have... Um, there's two ways. You can either... And I've said this before. You can either have Vicky... Um, uh, open the closet door and the closet, you might have to choose a different closet or just build. I don't know if that was on a sound stage or if that was in a real house. Um, but you just have to build a deep build or look for a deeper closet. Uh, so you can put him back further kind of in the shadows, but you either have it to a point where she opens the closet door. The light is already off. Julian wants you to go to the closet and turn it on. Uh, so she goes to the closet, opens it and turns it on. And oh my God, there he is, right? You could do it that way. Or you could have it where she opens the closet. She goes to turn on the light and the light doesn't work because the bulb was out. So she turns around, she faces Julie and she says, Hey, do your parents have an extra bulb? Where, do, you know, where do they keep them? And then behind her, again, you'd have to have a deeper closet, I think, but behind her, you begin to see the mask slowly emerge. And Julian's like, and she's like stop that stop that. you know whatever and then she turns around ever and there he is but his mask just kind of like that laurie strode halloween moment right just kind of not at the end of the first movie but or at the end of 18 but i'm talking about at the uh the end of the original film right when she's kind of crying and she's backing and you just see his mask that's what i'm talking about or in halloween 2 nurse janet she's backing into the wall we see dick warlock slow. that's what i'm talking about um, that's character continuity. And, and that would have been interesting to me. That would have been exciting. That doesn't, like those things don't make the movie great. I'm just saying that, that with those things, um, you know, uh, paying attention to those nuances, um, I, I think would have, you know, worked better because otherwise it, it just, it could have been anybody in the closet, right? You know, it, it, it's, it's just a guy in a mask in the closet. Um, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. But, you know, obviously I have the epic Halloween 18 review on my channel, which you can check out. I think it's got like 70,000 views or something like that. And all my thoughts are there. I, I watched Halloween 18 last year. Haven't watched it since. Um, it's the same. I mean, it's, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. There's a, there's a lot of good in there. And, and there's a lot of things I wish they could have done a bit differently to match that continuity um but overall i think it's the best in the trilogy still um 
it's too bad they didn't leave it at that. I understand why they didn't. It became the highest grossing slasher in motion picture history. If I was head of Universal and Jason Blum, I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to leave it either. But, um, but it's too bad because I don't think ends or kills, as much as they do have their fans, I don't think they are as strong or as good as, as, as 18 was. Um, and 18, again, wasn't like amazing or anything, but I, I think it was, you know, the bar was very low. <laughs> the bar was very low. And so I think 18 was, 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 I don't think it was great. I, th I think it was, it was just good. It was, yeah, it was good. It was good. And that's all it needed to be. Um, but Christopher Nelson said something today on the Slaughtered Lamb podcast too, which I absolutely agree with, is that James Jude Courtney, or maybe it was Frank that mentioned it, I can't remember, but I, I agree with this, that James Jude Courtney rocked it as Michael Myers. They finally got Michael right. And that is true. That is true. In terms of the mask, in terms of the uh, the portrayal, the nuances and the idiosyncrasies of the of the movements and the character and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they did such a great job. James did James did such an amazing job, and and it was so wonderful to finally see a Michael Myers movie with a mask that looks like it. I mean, there are certain moments where I think it looks. I think for the most part, because of James's head shape and the way the mask is, it probably looks a little more like the mask from Halloween 2, which of course is the same mask from Halloween 1, but you know what I'm trying to say. It looks a little more Dick Warlocky, especially in that scene when Vicky is dying and she's looking up at the shape and the shape is looking down. You know, it's a POV shot from her perspective and you see James just kind of doing this and it gets, you know... Uh, fuzzier and fuzzier and fuzzier. That, that, it looks so much like uh, the mask from part two. Um, so, but we haven't been able to say that in decades. You know, the mask in four, the mask in five, the mask in six, the mask in H2O, the mask in resurrection, Rob Zombie. And although they all have their fans, right? There's, there's plenty of people out there that really love the mask, you know, from each movie. Overall, or as I like to say, generally speaking, uh, the mask has always been an area of contention. Always been an area of contention in every single Halloween movie after Halloween 2. And so it was not an issue here. Nobody complained about them. I mean, maybe some people did, I don't know. But overall, people dug the mask, you know what I mean? And listen, as much as I don't like kills, I mean, again, there's things about it I do like, but overall, I like 18 better. The Mask and Kills is great. What Christopher Nelson and his team did was spectacular with the burn and all. It was fantastic. Um, I think The Mask and Ends is, you know, again, it's it's basically the kills look just a bit faded and a bit moldy because it's been four years. But uh, I think there's more of a change between 18 and Kills than there is between Kills and Ends. Um, but all three are, are are fantastic. They They all look like the, um, you know, the face that, that, that we want. So they got Michael right. Another thing they got right in every film, including 18, is, uh, is the music. The soundtrack is spectacular. The best soundtrack since, uh, I mean, in a Michael Myers movie since, since part two. And that's not to take anything away from Alan Howarth and the incredible work he did on four, five, and six. Uh, I have all their sound. He, it's amazing. The music in four, five, and six, and three, although that's not Michael Myers, is is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, but this is this is better than H two O. This is better than Resurrection. It's better than the Rob Zombie films. We haven't had this feeling with the music in years, and uh, the soundtrack is spectacular. It just is. It, it's it's so good. It's so it, it's so good in in every movie in every movie um it's really really good um and so yeah so michael the mask the music um i think at certain moments uh you know the setting fall quote unquote uh i think is pretty good um, yeah, like it's fine. Like, you know, there was never a moment where I thought it was the summer, you know, or something like that. So I think that's fine. I think, is it Michael Simmons? Is that the DP? Um, the cinematography I think is great. 
uh, in every movie, I think is really good. Uh, shout out to Marion Singh. Uh, her death in the first movie, I think, is is fantastic. It's a fan favorite. That's the one where she's at the the window and gets the knife through the neck. So good. So good. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot there's a lot to like, you know, and um, but you know, as a stickler, you know, t- to the average horror fan, it's probably great. To the Halloween purist, you know, we look for those things, right? You know, it's 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 um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it can be nitpicky and it can be frustrating and and it can be annoying, but um, you know, it it is what it is. Uh, but it's all in good fun, you know, at the end of the day. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, it, it, it might seem like I take it very seriously. Um, but I, and, and it's not that I'm not passionate about it and I don't actually believe these things that I'm saying I do, uh, but I don't lose sleep over it. It's not like I go to bed angry or, you know, get online and yell and scream over people that don't agree with me. <laughs> I couldn't give a frog's fat ass who agrees with me or not. And neither should you, like I always say, um, but you know what? It was it was a heck of a journey. It was a heck of a ride. Met some wonderful people. Uh, you know, had some cool opportunities. Um, and it was just a. It, it's hard to believe it's been five years. It's hard to believe it's been five years. And and uh, you know, we're knocking on thirty thousand subs, which is amazing. Uh, like I said, if 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 I had structured my channel a bit differently, uh, I'd probably have more. Well, I, I I know I'd have more. Actually, it was a few years ago. I did a. Uh, um, I did a, uh, I went to my Google analytics and went to, uh, uh, what's the, um, social blade, I think is the the site. And I, I did sort of an average, if I had kept up the pace by doing what I was doing, um, at that time, I would have been over 40,000. And that was, I think in 2020 or something like that. So, I mean, by now I'd probably be at like 60, you know, or 70. Right. But, but I, I don't do the kind of content and on a regular basis that draws in a lot of subscribers. Um, but then again, you know, the YouTube algorithms are weird as well because, you know, I see some channels out there that have lots of subscribers and like way more than me, but I get 10 times the engagement they do. And so that is one thing I'm always quite proud of here, actually. And that's thanks you know, to all of you, um, is that I do get pretty good engagement. Um, even though like every time I go live, like, of course I'm talking Halloween. So, you know, we have nearly 200 people in here, but even when I'm not talking Halloween and I go live, um, I'll average like 130, 140 people in the chat room. And that's, a lot more than some channels that have double the subscribers get when they go live. So it's a, the YouTube algorithms is an, is an interesting, weird, it's, 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 it's very weird. It's very, very weird. Um, but nonetheless, nonetheless, I digress, but it was a hell of a ride, man. It was a hell of a ride. Uh, and 18, I think, you know, I think 18 still holds up. I do. I don't know if I like it more than I did five years ago, but it certainly hasn't gone down. I think it's a good you know, I think it's a, I think it's a good Halloween movie. Um, and certainly it was the best Halloween movie we had gotten in, well, at least two decades at that point. And it may still be the best Halloween movie we've gotten since some people might say H2O. I would probably go as far back as Halloween four. That's as far back as I would go. I think Halloween 18 is the best Halloween movie I don't think it's a great Halloween movie, like I've always said, but I think it's the best Halloween movie since Halloween 4. I think that's probably pretty accurate because, you know, look at 5, right? You look at 6, you look at H2O, although H2O does have its fans, Resurrection, then the Rob Zombie films. I mean, there's not a lot of, there's the, the, the bar wasn't very high. So me saying that I don't think is a, is a, is a, a hot, take to say that Halloween 18 is probably the best Halloween movie since Halloween 4, that's probably not a hot take, I wouldn't imagine. It might be for some because there are a lot of H2O fans out there, but yeah, it was an awesome ride, an awesome ride. So I want all of you to jump into the comment section and let me know your thoughts on Halloween 2018 and how do you feel about it? Does it still hold up for you? 
how did you feel about it when you saw it? Did you love it? And now you're not so crazy on it. Were you not so crazy on it, but now you love it. Jump into the comment section. And let me know. I would love to know. So let's jump over to the, uh, the, um, uh, the chat room and see what you are all saying. All right. We got some super chats that came in. We got Josh McKenna sends in $9.99. Thank you, Josh, and says, this is an unpopular opinion, but I liked Ghostbusters 2016. Me too. Uh, I didn't think it was as good as the original. Me neither. But I still laughed. Me too. It is crazy how many people uh, got mad about the 2016 movie. Well, again, Josh, I mean, it's it's the culture war, right? It's it's the it's drama and the culture war is big business. There, there are people online that make their living being professionally outraged. That's just what they do. Um, and listen, I'm, you know me, I'm all down for a good rant or a good, what the fuck that went, wait a minute. And I get on here and I use my platform to vent about something that I don't like, but I can't imagine doing that day in and day. I, I listen, I guess if the money was good, <laughs> maybe if the money was good, I don't know, but I can't imagine doing that as that's just what I do. That's the identity of my channel is just rage and they're out there they're out there and that doesn't mean like i've said before that some of these channels don't have valid points i just can't imagine living in a in a pool of 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 outrage all the time you know i'd, I'd rather you know vent from time to time but also talk about things i love anyway um yeah that just got caught up in all of that ghostbusters 2016 is fine it's fine it was directed by Paul Feig, who did Bridesmaids, which was great, who did Spy, which was great. Um, I mean, he's a competent, good director. Ghostbusters 2016 was fine. Of course, it's not as great as the original, but it's not the catastrophic dumpster fire that these channels would like you to believe it is, right? Um, of course, that's my opinion. Of course, if you feel it is, then that's fine. But anyway, Happy Sanjo sends in a member chat and says, I went and saw Killers of the Flower Moon last night. Uh, solid eight out of 10. Well-made movie all around, even if it's not a subject that immediately grabs you. Yeah, I do. I definitely want to see it. I don't know if I'm going to get to the theater to see it, but I definitely do want to see it for sure. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Adam Mills sends in a member chat. Oh, hey, wait, no, Adam Mills is a new member. Adam Mills is a new member. Welcome, Adam. Welcome. Joined uh, level number one. Amazing. Thank you, Adam, so much for becoming a member here on the channel. Matthew Farisi sends in $4.99 and says, not a perfect film, but I enjoy it. Uh, also responsible for me finding this channel back in the summer of 2018 when the trailer dropped. That's so cool, Matthew. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like I've been saying, it was a hell of a ride, you know, and, and I never thought that I would be, I, I just needed a place to talk about movies, to talk about my passions. And, um, and it was really cool to see. It was just so cool that, that, you know, I knew that I was going to come at the franchise from a bit of a different perspective. Again, more of that analytical, deep dive symbolism, you know, and that is what I was doing a lot in the beginning. Um, you know, were those those types of uh, videos. And like I've said, I mean, I've, I've been called everything under the sun, you know, pretentious, condescending, you know, whatever, right? And it's like, whatever. I mean, people are allowed to think, you know, whatever the hell they want to think. But um, I'm just really passionate about that kind of stuff and love talking about it. And, I, and it's, I'm just happy that people like listening to me. And that doesn't mean that you have to agree with me, but they're just different things. It's just a different perspective and looking at things from, from a bit of a different perspective, which I think is always kind of cool. Um... Matthew Farisi follows up with a dollar ninety nine and says, "I'd give it an eight out of ten. It's only behind H one and H two. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I I think I gave it a six and a half, seven. I think I think a seven. I think I could settle on a seven. You know, a seven out of ten. I think I might have given it like a C plus or something like that. Um, I." I, yeah, no, I'm, I, I think I'd probably put four still ahead ahead of it for nostalgia. Um, but yeah, it's it's there. I mean, it's, I'd have to look at my most recent ranking. I don't know where I put it, but it's probably somewhere around there. Josh McKenna sends in a... Uh, oh, no, Josh just became uh, a member. A member, Josh became a member. Hey, Josh, welcome. I thought you were already a member, Josh. That's so strange. I thought you were already a member. Um, I must be having a brain fart. Anyways, welcome, Josh. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nighttime sends in $5 says the next shot after Corey gets off the floor is a shot of Allison's hands looking 
evil. Then when we get a transition shot of a full moon, Allison cursed Corey. Uh, you're talking about Halloween end. So the next, the next shot after Corey gets off the floor is a shot of Allison's hands looking evil. Would, would, I, I'm not sure what you mean by her hands looking evil. Uh, then we get a transition shot of a full moon. Allison cursed Corey. Um, I, I, I think you're probably reading a little too much into it, but uh, sure. I mean, you know, you'd have to, I think I, I, I need to be, I need more of a, uh, I need more convincing than, than that, than that sentence. Let's just put it that way. Uh, as a possible theory. Uh, Flets Movie Chat and more sends in a member chat and says, Hey, Dave, cheers to one month as a member. Congratulations to five years for Halloween 2018. Thank you, Flet. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Moonstone sends in six ninety nine and says, When I thought Castle was going to be Michael Myers, I remember thinking that Halloween would go back to the basics as I didn't expect him to perform crazy stunts. Yeah, a lot of us thought that too. That was another thing. Good point. Good point. Thanks for bringing that up. A lot of us thought that. A lot of us did. Like, what? how's this going to work? Because he was like, how old is he, 75? He was like 70, right? And it's like, how's this going to work? Yeah, very good point. Brandon Barry sends in a very generous super chat of 1999. Thank you, Brandon. Says, Dave, well, uh, well at D-backs versus Phillies game, Dave listening while at the D-backs versus Phillies game, waiting for game to start. Amazing. Uh, I will say first, uh, first film holds up, sound, holds up. Soundtrack, mask, the only thing bothers me is still the Dr. Sartain character, useless in my opinion. Well, what's so unfortunate about the Dr. Sartain character is, again, I think the I think one of the reasons why, actually, um, it was so disappointing. Uh, you know, I go as far to say that it was disappointing that he exited so early because he had that gravitas and, you know, that beautiful accent. And not that we were looking for somebody to be a literal Loomis replacement, but I think had he, it would, it would have been interesting to see that dynamic and that struggle that he has uh, move past just the little sort of bits we got with him in 18 wanting to see him in you know out of captivity in the wild getting Lori and him like just more of that I wanted to dive more in I wanted to dive more into the psychology of that and understand that a bit more and that's interesting because it's it's sort of like the antithesis of what Loomis was trying to do and so that was interesting to me and and we we, we understood little bits of that but it just they kind of just like threw it away and so it was disappointing uh, that's what she said, sends in a member chat and says, as someone with depression, I just want to say thank you, Dave and your viewers, this channel. And in particular, these live streams have brightened some dark days. Thanks for some, uh, thanks for some bringing happiness to me. Well, thank you for tuning in, man. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope everything is going well. And I'm glad that these shows have been able to at least been a, uh, at least have been a bright spot in your life. That means a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan sends in five euros and says, 2018 was amazing, but for Dr. Sartain, didn't agree with the kills, but love the final scene of ends. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people did. David Lee Barron sends in 499. Thank you, David. And David says, oh, hang on a sec here. David Lee Barron, where are you? There you are. David Lee Barron says, Dear Dr. Pichet, first video I saw of yours was when you were talking about the fake solar eclipse photos on Facebook. Oh, yes. Do you remember those photos? Yes. That would have been August 2017. That would have been August 2017 because I remember I was at that time, I was, I think I had, this is funny that I remember this. Do you guys remember the, um, uh, the animated movie, um, Le uh, Lego Ninjago? Lego Ninjago. Do you guys remember the Lego? It, it was called Lego Ninjago. Jackie Chan was uh, the voice of um, one of the people in the, in, the, in, the, in the cartoon. I think it was called Lego Ninjago. Do you guys remember that? Uh, I, that came out in 2017, I believe. And I was down at Chorus Entertainment in Toronto doing some uh, some promos for that movie. And I remember that after that movie was, uh, or 
after Ninjago. Yeah, yeah, Ninjago. Ninjago. Thank you, Nighttime. Yeah, it, it, it came off the heels of like, you know, Lego Batman, all that kind of stuff. But I was down at Course Entertainment and I was doing a bunch of spots for Lego Ninjago, the Lego Ninjago movie. And I remember that the eclipse was happening at the time that I was doing that. And myself and the producers and everybody, we all went up onto the roof of, um, uh, of Chorus Entertainment and uh, they had these eclipse glasses that everybody was wearing and I got a pair and we all watched the eclipse on the roof of like one of Canada's largest entertainment companies. Um, with a bunch of people I did not know, uh, a bunch of people I did know, of course, who I worked with directly. But I remember standing up there and watching the solar eclipse. Solar eclipse? Is that how? You, yeah. Solar's the sun, right? Lunar eclipse is the moon. Solar. Anyway, uh, watching the eclipse. And that was really cool. And that was August 2017. And I don't know why I remember. Well, I'm very good with dates anyway. But, uh, but yes, yes, David, I do remember those videos. I do. Yep. You're right. Um, Ninjago used to watch that, says Peter Vankman. Was it a cartoon before it was a movie? Let me see here. Oh, okay. So it was a cartoon before it was, um, oh, maybe they've, uh, it was TV series. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not familiar with the TV series. I'm just familiar with, uh, the movie. The Lego Ninjago. If you type in Lego Lego Ninjago, it says animated series. Okay, but this is, hang on. The Lego Ninjago movie. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, David Franco, Jackie Chan, Zach Woods. Yeah, the Lego Ninjago movie. That, okay, I didn't know it, it stemmed from a, from a TV show. Anyways, I'm talking about the movie from 2017. Uh, I was doing a bunch of spots for that. And that's, and, and I remember them all being like, hey, uh, wanting to, get through it as quickly as possible because we didn't want to miss the eclipse, which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's a long time ago, David. Uh, where Nomad has gone before sends in $10. Thank you, buddy. It says, hi, Dave. I always have enjoyed your content and really liked meeting you in Glendale. I missed your live the other day. I wanted to ask, did your dad like hate mail and ever shared any hate mail with you? Great question. Um, so yeah, my dad, well, my dad grew up, I mean, obviously, you know, there was no social media, no YouTube. Um, my dad passed away in 2011. So YouTube and social media was still, I mean, it was obviously being used, but but not, not hugely uh, like it is now. Um, and so if my dad received hate mail, it would have been, you know, letters to the editor, um, which he received some for sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I just remember, um, I remember, this is a funny story. Some of you in the States may not know this name, but there was a, um, there was a, a, a Canadian singer by the, the, this is a funny story, which you're probably going to like. Uh, there was a Canadian singer by the name of St uh, Tom Connors. Uh, he's dead now. He died in 2013. He was like a country folk singer. And he went by the name Stompin' Tom Connors because whenever he was on, on uh, stage performing, and he performed all around the world, whenever he was on stage performing, he would, he would strum his guitar and he would stomp his, his right foot or his left foot or whatever. So he got the nickname Stompin' Tom Connors. And he's the one, one of his most famous songs is the hockey song. So if you are a hockey fan, right? Uh, if you're a hockey fan, you might know the hockey song. Um, and they don't play it really much anymore, um, but it would play it like, you know, games and things. It's like a full, it's actually really catchy. It's really, really catchy. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the chat knows wh what the hockey song is, but nonetheless, so um, my dad wrote, and I, <laughs> my dad wrote an article in the early 90s because the hockey song was being used in stadiums around the NHL. And my dad wrote a, uh, an article but he's like, why are they playing this hokey, wimpy? Now, it's actually really catchy. And even my dad was like, 
It's actually really good. Uh, but but he was but it didn't feel see at the time it didn't feel you know the it's the NHL you know and this kind of felt like it. I, I get what my, my dad was a contrarian anyway, and he was probably bored and needed something to write about. Anyway, my dad wrote this article. I was like, don't play that in the play. You know, anyways, it's a whole thing. I'm like 11 or 12 years old. And anyways, this was this pissed a lot of people off. And it pissed a lot of people off around the NHL. And I remember uh, on one of my, on one of Tom Connors' next concerts, I don't know where he was, but he had a gigantic photo of my dad. And it probably was my dad's newspaper picture. I would imagine it probably was the photo from the paper, although I don't know. And it was, he got it blown up. Like it was huge, like huge. Like maybe like three movie posters wide, three movie posters, like it was huge. And he put it on the stage. And when he sang the hockey song, he stomped on my dad's face. (laughs) It was amazing. Of course, my dad loved it. My dad loved it. Yeah, (laughs) you know, and, uh, uh, but you know, and then, you know, growing up with my dad, I mean, I, I remember um, there was some article my dad wrote about people in the Ottawa Valley. You know, he's being, he's just being silly, but you know, my dad knows how to stir the pot. My dad could, it's just the thing. That's what was so amazing about my father as a writer and why he was so revered and and sought after was because he he was a great writer. He, he, he could make you uh, cry. He could write beautiful articles, some of which he's won many awards for. And then he could also stir the pot, <laughs> which he knew how to do. And he knew what he was doing. My dad wasn't stupid. He, he, he knew what he was doing. And, and he stirred some pot, uh, w- about the people in the Ottawa Valley. So Ottawa is Canada's nation's capital. Okay. It's like our Washington. And, in the there's there's these small towns kind of you know on the outskirts and it's known as the Ottawa Valley. It would be like small towns on the outskirts of Washington being known as like the Washington Valley, you know that kind of thing, right? He he said something. He said something, and I remember when I had a hockey tournament in one of the towns there, and this is awful too because it goes to show you how just cruel people are because it's obviously I mean I'm. I'm a kid. I'm like 11. But of course, on the back of my jersey, I have the name McRae, right? And I'm skating around the ice and I'm getting heckled from other parents on the opposite team are heckling me in the stands because they know that's Earl McRae's son. I'm like 11. Parents can be so fucking cruel. You know what I mean? Why aren't they going over there and saying something to my father? (laughs) My dad was there watching the game. Of course, these are people that, you know, can't do it right anyways yeah so i've you know i got lots of stories folks lots of stories um like i said when i say that i've grown up in that environment i'm not kidding um you know it's it it was an interesting experience and there's good things too it's not all bad right i mean obviously i got to meet a lot of cool people because of what my dad did and and uh i I had my first on-air radio experience at the age of 13 you know not too many people can say that you know um and so But when it comes to hate mail, I don't recall my dad. I mean, my dad would have, um, but he didn't like share it with me. He just taught me the lessons of, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if they like you. I mean, obviously you always hope people like you, of course, right? Nobody wants to be hated, but it's out of your control, right? You have to be you and you have to be authentic and genuine. And at the end of the day, people are either going to like you or they're not right? That's, that's just what it is. And so I remember my dad saying, the question is not whether they, they like me or hate me. The question is, are they reading me? And the answer is always yes. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I mean, obviously there'd be some people that may not, but my dad had plenty of people who go, ah, that Earl McRae really pissed me off. I'm, I'm never reading him again. And then of course, what do they do? They pick up the paper the next day because they want to read him. Right. You know? And, um, so I, you know, I learned that. So when I, Spending most of my life in the world of voiceover, obviously, I'm not out in the public eye like my dad was, even though you've probably heard my voice many times. Um, 
when I started the YouTube thing and really putting my face out there, uh, I remembered that, you know, it was like, well, I can't do this. I mean, not everybody's going to like me. I'm opinionated. Uh, I'm theatrical. Uh, I got a big personality. Not everybody's going to like me. So that's just, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Right. So I've always remembered that from my dad, but, uh, yeah, it was, I got lots of stories, folks, lots of stories, lots of stories, <laughs> lots of stories. Um, I don't know if anybody, did anybody say they knew the song? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, okay, let me, I got that. Super chat from Nighttime sends in $2, says you missed one super chat, $10, it explained my theory. Okay, I will go back and get that. Let me see, let me go back and get that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I don't know if I got the violator 862, did I? Uh, well, I, oh no, I think I did. Well, I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, I got your, your super chat nighttime. The one that says Allison cursed Corey and put a spell on him at the Halloween party and transferred her e oh, no, no, this is different. You're right. Uh, and transferred her evil to him when he was laying on the dance floor. Did you notice her movements, Corey, as, uh, shaking on the floor? Yeah, I, I, I'd have to watch the movie again. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not an interesting theory, um, but we'd have to know what, what... Is Allison a witch? Is Allison, like... Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like why would that... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 where does that come from, right? It, it, it would feel, it doesn't feel properly motivated for the theory to hold water um, because it, Alice, is she a witch? Does she, is she into voodoo? Is there something we don't know? Like, it's never revealed. It's never, like, it can't just be somebody that just does that and then all of a sudden, you know, like, I get what you're saying. I get the track you're on, but for me as a, as a, as a, as an audience, it would have to be properly motivated and justified. Um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting theory for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, let me scroll down here. Get back to the, just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, next one coming up here. Michael Dammit sends in a member chat and says, Dave, have you seen the series The Fall of the House of Usher on Netflix? I have not, Michael. No, I have not. I have not. Um, I know it's really popular right now. Mike Flanagan, obviously. Uh, so I may have to check it out. I haven't really watched any of his shows, though. I started watching Midnight Mass and I forgot to watch the rest. Uh, the Violator 499, thank you, says, Dave, remember to be on the lookout for the almighty volcanic master. He's out there and he's pissed at you. Oh, I know, folks. If you haven't seen, if you haven't watched the previous McRae Live from the other day, you've got to, you've got to. I read some DMs from people and, and um, they're real DMs. Oh, yeah. I think what I find so interesting, um, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but what I find so interesting, and I don't know if it's, I don't have an answer. And it could be all of the above. I don't know. But first of all, I've never in my life watched somebody, I could be putting my foot in my mouth here that I can think of. Um, I don't recall watching somebody, whether it's on television, you know, or, you know, a YouTuber. or Like, I, I've never, ever watched somebody that has irritated me so much that I feel the need to DM them and tell them? Like, if I don't like somebody, I just turn it off and walk away? Like, I, I, I again, I don't know if that's, again, if that's an age thing or, or what, and then, you know, people who have grown up in the, in the, you know, social media age just don't know what to do with themselves. Um, but I, I do find it interesting how there are certain people that just loathe me, can't stand me, you know, and, and it probably just irks them even more that I don't care. Even that face right there, they probably want to punch it. I don't care. But it's just funny. It's just funny. I'm just like, I've never, it's, it's YouTube. It's just like, I don't get it. 
I, I don't get it. It's just weird. It's just weird. It's weird. I mean, I've watched plenty of videos and people whose personalities I don't gel with. I'm like, ah, I'm not crazy on this person. You know, I don't really feel kind of like I'm just, and I just stop watching them, you know? And, you know, let's be honest. I think most of the time that's what people do, right? I think the trolls, they're, 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 uh, they're few, but they're loud, you know, because they're either very young or there's something not all there or, you know, whatever the case is. And, and, uh, but it's really funny. It is. It's yeah. The volcanic master. I mean, who writes this shit? Who writes this shit? David Lee Barron follows up 499 says, Dear Dr. Pichet, how do you think Mr. Baz Luhrmann handled the controversial Elvis and black people subject matter in the film? Did you enjoy the movie? Um, well, I think I talked about it on my review uh, of Elvis or the video that I talked about. I thought he did a really good job. You know, again, there's there's a style to, to Luhrmann's films, right? And, you know, I mean, it was, I think for what it was, it was fine. And it was very well done. And I think Austin Butler did uh, a great job. I think he did a great job. Um, I think that people, I'll just say this. And as somebody who, I don't want to get on a big thing about this, but as somebody who is, I'm not going to say I'm an expert on Elvis, but let's just say that I, because of my dad, speaking of my father, I grew up um, in a very interesting Elvis Presley environment. Uh, the Coles note, the Cliff Notes version. My dad was a huge Elvis fan. My dad was going to meet Elvis uh, the fall of '77. Of course, Elvis died on August the 16th, 1977. Um, my dad, in the late '80s, uh, he put together this this big story. Uh, there was in the late '80s. There 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 were a lot of um, uh, sightings of Elvis. Elvis is alive. Is alive. Is alive. And you don't hear that anymore, but that was a big thing in the late eighties. And my dad being an Elvis fan, uh, wrote about it. And, uh, he has a friend, uh, named Mo Atella of, uh, the Newport restaurant in Ottawa. Uh, and my dad started, to, he, he wrote this thing about how, no, Elvis is not, you know, in Kalamazoo, Michigan. He's not over here. He's actually in Tweed, Ontario, Canada. And Tweed is a little town between here and Ottawa. It's a sleepy little town. Very nice little town. I drove through the, uh, the other day, actually, on my way up to the location scout for It's Me, Billy. And um, so I also have an affection for Tweed. And, um, and he wrote about this. And of course, it caught on like wild. And my dad, it, no, it's not true, obviously, but my dad has the best poker face on the planet. And he wrote it as if he was serious. And he was serious. He was serious. Elvis is alive and lives in Tweed, Ontario, Canada. And he wrote about this and uh, the Elvis Sighting Society. So if you see Elvis, you have to contact the Elvis Sighting Society, which is at the Newport restaurant. Well, you'd think that now the fucking business for the Newport just went through the roof. And at one time in the Newport, there was Elvis uh, memorabilia all over the wall because it, it uh, you know, people from the States heard about this and would send things and people would write letters to the Newport. Well, the Jerry Springer show heard about it. Now, I've told this story before, but keep in mind, this is Jerry Springer before he was Jerry, Jerry, not throwing chairs and, you know, wild beatdowns, Jerry. This is like Jerry 1992, 93. He was kind of like a Montel Williams back then. And my dad went on the Jerry Springer show and he was sitting there on stage talking about how Elvis, he was, I, I have this, I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it. I just haven't done it yet. I got stories, folks. This is this is the life I lived, uh, you know, before I went to college, and um, it was it was fun though. It was it was interesting experience, and so uh, uh, you know, he was a big Elvis fan, and 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 he was on the Jerry Springer show. Elvis is alive, and my dad had this friend named Bruce McGregor, who uh, couldn't. He, he had a a band. He couldn't sing like Elvis, but he could talk like Elvis. My dad would. Be hating dad don't roll over in your grave the cat's out of the bag don't roll over in your grave dad um but he uh he could speak like elvis could speak like elvis presley and uh like to a t he sounds exactly so that was the voice you hear on the phone on the jerry springer show and everybody was going wild holy shit it's holy fucking shit and now nah, it was crazy it was crazy and so anyway uh when bill clinton 
when Bill and Hillary came to Canada in 1995, um, when for their you know their their state trip to Canada, um, we had reached. I say we, uh, my dad and uh, the, uh, the paper he worked for and everything had reached out to uh, them uh, asking that because Bill Clinton's a big Elvis Presley fan to come by the Newport, him and Hillary and the Secret Service come by the Newport and and have lunch at the Newport. Elvis, blah blah blah. Well, they 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 didn't do that because their you know itinerary was so busy. But in the mail about two weeks later, my dad received an official letter from the White House signed by President Bill Clinton. Very sorry we couldn't come, but thanks for the invite. It's a terrible Bill Clinton impression, but you know what I'm doing. Um, that was really cool. So that was on on my dad on my dad's wall, uh, which was wild. And um, and this is just when I was a kid with my dad. I mean, my dad was a journalist long before that. My dad's been a journalist since the mid '60s. You know, I'm just talking about stuff with the late '80s and the '90s. Um, so there's stories, man. Oh, there's stories. Um, so let's just say that I have a, I grew up on a healthy dose of Elvis Presley, a healthy dose of Elvis Presley. And so, um, one of the things that I think that, that, that sort of rubs me the wrong way is when I hear people, and, and listen, there are a lot of black artists that, that do acknowledge this nuance, right? It's, it's all about nuance. Is that Elvis stole black music? He didn't steal it. Um, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all because People have to remember that Elvis Presley was born in Tupelo, Mississippi and hailed from Memphis, Tennessee. He was a Southern boy. He grew up around black families, had black friends. He grew up in that environment. The gospel music, the religious music, you know, that style of music. It was what he knew. It's what he grew up on. It's what influenced him. And at that time in the, you know, late 40s, early 50s, oh man, it was very racially divided. And there's no hope in hell that, you know, I mean, the fact that people like Chuck Berry and, and, you know, certain black artists were able to become as successful as they were even was incredible. Um, but it, but what Elvis did was he played the music that influenced him and that he loved and that he grew up on. And, and he was, had a spectacular voice, an incredible voice. And some people who would, uh, when they heard him on the radio thought he was black, um, because he kind of had that you know, that thing, right? And, uh, but he was a beautiful voice and handsome to all hell. And, but, un and I say this unfortunately, because obviously it should not have been this way, but because he was white, he was able to take that music that mostly lived and breathed in that Bible Belt Southern, you know, mostly, right? He, he, he was able to take that rhythm and blues and, and take it sort of out of the clubs and to the mainstream, to the white people, essentially. And yes, it shouldn't be this way at all. It's awful to, to think that, that this was it's the way it was. But it's because he was white and handsome to all hell that the white people bought into it, right? So it's not that Elvis stole the music. Like he sat there one day, like Elvis was born in Brooklyn, you know, and he was into, I don't know, uh, something completely different. And one day he was at a jazz bar and saw somebody was like, Ooh, uh, I really like that. I think I'm just going to take that for myself and pretend that I came up with it. That's not what Elvis did. That's not what happened at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so I think that in the confines of the movie, um, I mean, you, you could do a whole movie on how Elvis was influenced by the music, took it to the, I mean, you could do a whole fucking movie on that, right? They didn't, they had to kind of truncate it into sort of the beginning. Um, but I think they did a good job with what they had. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it was fine. And I'm not saying that there aren't other things to, you know, knock Elvis for, but to, to make a blanket statement like Elvis stole black music is factually incorrect. There's so much nuance there that you you have to dive into it. You have to dive into it. There's reasons why um, 
you know, he, he, and, and before it's not that that music didn't exist before Elvis. Oh, it existed before Elvis. It's just that it wasn't mainstream. The reason why he's called the king of rock and roll. And by the way, he didn't call himself that Elvis didn't walk along. Going, you know, I, you know, baby, I'm the king of rock. And roll. He, he didn't say that. He didn't call himself that he didn't like to be called that that was bestowed upon him by others. But the reason why he's known as the king of rock and roll, which technically, you know, people think that means that he came up with rock and roll, which technically is not true, but he took it mainstream. The mainstream audience, national, across the world, nobody had heard anything like this. Before Elvis, I think it was John Lennon that said, before Elvis, there was no one or there was nothing. Now, John Lennon didn't mean that that music didn't exist. John Lennon didn't mean that before Elvis, that he just came up with that. John Lennon's talking about the pop cultural zeitgeist impact. There had never been anybody like Elvis Presley before Elvis Presley. Nobody had seen anything like this. It was mind-blowing. We can't comprehend that today because there's 50 Elvises now that come around every year that are gigantic pop stars and you know but back then back then in 1954 55 56 nobody's seen anything like this listen to the number one song from 1951 <laughs> you know what I'm saying I mean nobody had seen anything like this and so you know it, it again again there's there's nuance that has to be instilled into these conversations and uh you know, it, it, it just, yeah, it, you know, they're just, uh, so I think he did an okay job. I think he did an okay job. Uh, Daniel Gaheen, Jaheen sends in $5 says, I remember hearing that, uh, I remember hearing that going to the Sabres games growing up. Oh, the hockey song. You remember that? Hello out there. We're on the air. Da -dun 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 -dun. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good song. It's a good song. Well, let's just say stomping Tom Connors. I don't know what concert it was but yeah he had a big gigantic photo of my dad and he was stomping on my dad's face as he sang that song um you know it was it was you know again there were a lot of good things about growing up in a media family and a lot of things that i've learned a lot of things that i've taken into my own life into the entertainment industry um and a, a lot of things i try to abide by um, but it wasn't always easy, you know, growing up with a controversial writer, I'm not saying controversial, but growing up with a writer that, that was, you know, um, I'll say controversial for the lack of, of, of another word, but it's not, it's not like he was controversial, like all the time. Um, but growing up with, with, in that environment where people, you know, um, I was bullied in, in school as well. Uh, and that often comes from people, you know, it's, it's not that the bullies don't like me. It's that their parents don't like my dad. And once the bullies find out that Earl McRae's son is in their class, do you know what I mean? And then they, you know what I mean? It's, it's just awful. And this is back, you know, you know, I, I can't even imagine what bull, I mean, oh my God, it must be dreadful for these poor kids now. It must be dreadful. So it wasn't all all sunshine and rainbows, as so as Rocky would say. Uh, but certainly it was, you know, it did it 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 was cool at, at times too. Um PJ, hey, what's going on? PJ sends in $13.99. Thank you, PJ. Says, hey, Dave. Yeah, agree. Uh, would like to have seen more explanation, excuse me, exploration of Sartain through the trilogy. Or alternatively, maybe Aaron, the podcaster. Both were the, uh, both were the trying to figure out Michael types type as a foil. I agree with that. I do. You know, I, I think um, some people speculated that, you know, would, would Aaron come back? Right, you know, would he come back and and in kills or ends? You know, again, as you know, PJ, uh, you know, things have to be properly motivated, right? And and so, um, I think it makes more sense to kill Aaron and keep Sartain than to kill them both and bring Aaron back. Uh, even though I know technically, you know, the last time we saw him, he was like. <gasps> <sighs> <sighs> you know, with blood all over his face and say, like, well, technically we didn't see that he, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he had some sort of hemorrhage, but um, yeah, I think it just would have been cool to see Sartain la Maybe you kill him in kills, you know, but just to nurture that interesting perspective, you know, where 
he he wants to, I mean, really, he, he wants to, he wants to see Michael in, like, out of captivity in the environment. It's because of him that shit went down. That's interesting. I would have liked to have seen, and, and I think for me, it just feels we, aban- I, I think there was a lot of potential there, and we abandoned that too quickly. Um, I would have liked, yeah, I would have liked that he survived a bit longer into kills. And because Halloween kills picks up on the same night, that's entirely, I mean, you could do that. You could do that. You could just have him injured in the back of the police car or have him, maybe it's not hot. Maybe, although as much as I like Will Patton, maybe it's not Hawkins that, uh, that survives. Maybe it's Sartain. Maybe it's Sartain. And, uh, maybe Sartain gets something in the neck or whatever. He's lying. And it's Sartain that survives. And, Maybe it was Sartain that showed up with Dr. Loomis on the front lawn that night. I can't remember what Sartain said. I know at the beginning of 18, he said he'd been working under Dr. Loomis, but I can't remember if he said for how long. So maybe that wouldn't make much sense. And maybe Sartain would be too young. Maybe Sartain would be too young. But no, if it's 40 years, I would believe that Sartain was in his 60s. I don't know how old the actor is, but I would believe that he could be in his 60s. Um, in 18. So maybe he's young. Maybe he's a budding student. And I don't know. He shows up. With, I, I don't know. Maybe that maybe that wouldn't work. On second thought, maybe that wouldn't work. Maybe that would be a little too too much. But you but you get the idea that I'm saying, right? I'm I'm throwing things at the wall, trying to figure out ways to to kind of extend that a bit because I, I like the gravitas. I liked I liked his accent and I liked the way he spoke and he spoke with 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 um uh, commanding authority. And, and I really appreciated that commanding authority, but with his own agenda. And I think that's really cool. And I would have loved to have seen that. It just felt like it was just, eh, you know what I mean? And a lot of people think that, right? So it's a little unfortunate, but you know, um, all right, let me see here. Super Chad from Mark Worling sends in $5. Thank you, Mark. Says, Dave, have you seen Dr. Sleep, especially the, the director's cut? I have not yet. I loved it. I'd love to know your thoughts. Hope hope you see it. If you haven't, shape on. No, I haven't seen it. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. I have no idea. So don't expect it anytime soon. Um, and of course, I would never do a review on it. Um, so, but I hear it's good. I hear it's good. It's just, it's just a movie I haven't gotten around to yet, Mark. But, uh, but I will eventually. Um, Mark follows up with $5, says, have you seen the, oh, wait, I think that's the same, the same one, Mark, the same one. Um, but thank you. Thank you very much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, and then Mark Warling says, super, (laughs) send super chat twice. Sorry, not, no worries. Hey, I appreciate, I appreciate the support, Mark. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Shape on, shape on to you as well, Mark. Shape on to you as well. And then I think that's all the super chats I've got so far. Yes, I believe so. So let me see if I can grab some non-Super Chat ones. I think that's all the ones so far, if I'm not mistaken. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any. Let's see if I can get some non-Super uh, super Chat ones here. Um, okay, what people are saying? Let me see here. See if I can get somebody I haven't seen before. Um, a newbie, a newbie. Mad Blood says, "Happy Friday, everyone! Happy Friday to you, Mad Blood." Uh, Guitarist Dog eighty seven says, "Dave, if you could change one thing about eighteen, I would have suggested mentioning Karen to have died years before the events of eighteen, leaving Lori estranged from Allison until Michael's escape." You know, I don't mind that. I I don't mind that. I know there's been some discussion around that. Um. Yeah, I think focusing on, I do, I, I think focusing on the relationship between Allison and her grandmother actually would have been, would have been interesting. And that would have given you more time to flesh that out, develop it. And maybe you can keep her dad alive, right? So she lives with her dad um, and you keep him there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. What's one thing I would change? I mean, you know, again, I've talked about that closet scene. Um, these are just little things like, uh, when he puts on the mask, I love the reveal. I love the shot through the back of the windshield. He's putting on the mask. I love that. I just wish it was at night. I wish it was more, uh, more cinematic, more, more moody, more atmospheric. Uh, 
Now, I understand, as I've mentioned before, too, that in order for that scene to happen at night, you might have to rewrite a bit of the sequence of events leading up to it so it fits, so they get to the gas station at night rather than during the day, and you know what I'm saying? But that's not that hard to do. That's not that hard to do, especially in a you know slasher film, a slasher film like Halloween. It wouldn't take too much juggling around, and you could justify it. You could justify it by just saying the trip to that gas station was you know whatever, right? It was longer. Um, but I would have loved to have seen it because the last time we saw Michael Myers was when he was lying on the ground, Doctor Loomis looking down. He's you know, and then all of a sudden he's gone. It was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was, and so to go back and to see, like kind of have him there. There's maybe like a lamppost or, or maybe it's the moon that split lighting. He puts it on. Oh, I would have loved the, um, the, uh, the bathroom scene with Dana, Aaron and Michael. I would have loved to have had that happen at night so that, uh, maybe there's just like a flickering fluorescent bulb in there. You know, it's, something like that, that would have been really interesting. That would have been really interesting. And, and I think, uh, yeah, that, that would have been interesting. Um, and yeah, like it happens at night. So it's, it's just eerie and it's grungier and, you know, and maybe the light flashes on and off as people are being killed and, you know, whatever, right. Or, or the, or the light goes out completely and now you just hear the sounds and things like that. And maybe she takes out her phone and she's got her phone light and now it's properly motivated. It's justified. The light's been smashed. It's dark outside. She's using her cell phone like uh, her cell phone light and she's trying to peer through the crack of the, you know, the, you know, whatever, or, or, or maybe not her cell phone light, maybe just the light from the screen. Cause the cell phone light, like the flashlight on the cell phone might be too bright. So maybe she's got like her screen dimmed and she's trying to, you know, whatever. And you can get that like, that really nice under light on her face and stuff and things like that, you know, um, that would have been interesting to see things like that. I think, I think that would have been cool for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Hey, Marion, Marion Singh is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Marion Singh is in the house. Marion, I forgot to, um, I forgot to ask you because you were chatting with me. Uh, you attended the 45, the, what, you were signing at the Halloween 45 convention. Um, and uh, you, you gave me a little update, which was really cool. And I forgot to ask you how it went and everything too. So uh, I'm going to have to get you on soon and talk about that because that would be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure, I mean, one of the, the best deaths in the in the whole trilogy, really, at the end of the day. Marion says, Rian Reese sat next to me at the H45 convention. She is a great human being. Rian is wonderful. I met her at H40 and I did a little interview with her. Uh, it's on my channel. Um, she was very nice. And, um, I remember when I walked over and I, uh, her, uh, uh, handler, her assistant, I, uh, was very skeptical, I was very skeptical because I, I wasn't there to get an autograph. I was there to just do a little quick, you know, five minute, three minute, two minute, eight second, however long I was allowed interview with her. And I remember her handler being like, and who are you? And what is this all for? And where is this going? I'm like, oh, no, no, it's just, just you know, for YouTube. And they're like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, she actually asked me how many subs I had. Uh, and I remember at the time, I think I had like 10,000 subs or something like that. And that was enough apparently to get me an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because if I had only had maybe like, I don't know, 250 subs, I think I would have been denied. I, I, I think I would have been denied. Yeah. Her hand was like, and how many subs do you have? And I think it was, t I was like, I have 10,000 something. They're like, oh, okay. All right. Uh, Rian, uh, this guy here wants to do a, she was very nice. Couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been nicer. And I just, I, you know, I just asked her what, it, you know, all like, it, it's on my channel. You can YouTube it. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, she was a sweetheart. She, it was, she, it was fine. Um, you're amazing, Marion. I mean, you know, you're, I mean, that kill, like I said, that kill is, it's classic. It's classic stuff. And I think you were on the phone with Sally, right? Sally, mm -hmm, Sally. It's like a Linda moment. Oh, no, not a Linda moment, an Annie moment. Hi, Sally, poor Sally, scared another one away. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Yes, yes, we will definitely get you back on. We'll definitely get you back on because I'd love to hear about, you know, what's going on right now in your career, updates, that kind of stuff. And of course, the Halloween 45, what that was like. Uh, that was so cool. I saw photos of you as well, rocking the uh, fucking the suit you were rocking. I'm telling you, man, you look, you were styling. You were styling. Going out in style. Going out in style. Um, Rob Thidoff says, Dave, I know they would not look like them. I'm willing to suspend disbelief, but instead of Rachel and Brady in H4, it was Tommy and Lindsay. I think it would have put more meat on the bone. Uh, Tommy and Lindsay. Uh, yeah, I mean that, you know, you kind of have to fill in, you know, you lean into the stereotype that Tommy and Lindsay end up together. Um, but yeah, fr from a continuity perspective from that emotional attachment that that sort of yes you're right that that meat sort of yeah probably would do that and i know that people are gonna say but Lindsay and tommy are in halloween four because when um when uh jamie after the boogeyman boogeyman jamie's uncle's the boogeyman 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 she gets into the car with Rachel and Lindsay. Uh, it is out there now that we know that, uh, that that was supposed to be or is Lindsay Wallace. But here's my argument on that. Here's my argument on that. I do not, I stand to be corrected on this. Wait a minute, is Halloween 4, can I watch Halloween 4 for free on YouTube? One second. I just want to see if I can, because I want to go to the credits here. Halloween 4. Da, da, da. Yes, it is. Great. I want to just go right to the credits for a minute here. Let me just go to the credits. Hang on. Just give me a second here, folks. Go to the credits. Okay. We're going to the credits. All right. Dr. Loomis, Meeker, Kelly, Brady, Earl, Kyle, Boy, Kid, Leslie, She's got to be credited because she had lines. <clears throat> Logan, the kid, anchor woman, Unger, Dave. Uh -huh. Spy. Oh, hmm, wait a minute. Where is she? Hmm, this is interesting. I'm not seeing her credited. Really? This is interesting. Uh, well, this is... Oh, no, Tommy is credited. There's Tommy, Danny Ray. Where the hell is Lindsay? Leslie? Is that a mistake? There's a Leslie. Maybe it's a mistake. Hang on a sec. We got... Okay, we got Dr. Loomis, Rachel Carruthers, Jamie Lloyd, Michael Myers, Dr. Hoffman, Sheriff Meeker, Kelly Brady Earl. Uh, oh, Kelly Brady Earl. Uh... Jack Sayer, security guard, Richard Carruthers, Darlene Carruthers, woman attendant, man attendant, trooper one, two, three, four, Kyle, boy, girl, Leslie, or Leslie, female staffer, power worker, Wade, Tommy, deputy Pierce, elderly woman, Logan, hick kid, anchor woman, Unger, big Al, Orphan State Police. Lindsay, is that a mistake? Is that a mistake? Lindsay's not credited. There's a Leslie. Is that a mistake? Or am I, am I, hang on, there's stunts here, but no, that's it. There's stunts, the crew. Yeah, that's it. The credits are not that long. So are they, is she miss? Because that's, who's Leslie in Halloween 4? Who's Leslie in Halloween 4? Is there a Leslie in Halloween 4? I can't think of it. Anyway, the Halloween 4 credits, you can look this up yourself. There is no Lindsay in the Halloween 4 credits. There's a Leslie in the Halloween 4 credits. Alder Mercer says it has to be a mistake. Thunder Wolf 4 says probably a mistake. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, very much like the Halloween one and two credits of Michael Myers, age 23, should be 21. The girl in the car in Halloween four is named Lindsay. Yes, that's right. I know. That's what I've been saying. But when you watch the credits, 
Because she, okay, because on IMDb, there's a Lindsay character credited, just the first name. Thank you, PJ. Yeah, and, and so there's no last name. And of course, there wouldn't be a last name because we don't see, it's not like, I'm pretty sure when Jamie gets into the car, Rachel says, you remember Lindsay, don't you? Oh, yeah, hi. Hey, kiddo. Or, you know, whatever, right? So we hear the name Lindsay mentioned referring to this, uh, this character. There is no Lindsay in the credits, Yes, but, okay, well then, then it's a mistake because during the Halloween four, okay, Robert Fidoff says, Leslie L. Rowland is the actress that plays Lindsay. Thank you. So in the credits, Les, okay, we have Leslie played by Leslie L. Rowland. So it is a mistake. It is a mistake. It should say Lindsay instead of Leslie. Hey, am I the first to notice this? I don't know. Put it out there. Something new to talk about. <laughs> Fascinating. This is interesting. And purely discovered it by mistake. This is interesting. So yes, that is a mistake. It, sh it should say Lindsay and not Leslie. Okay. So apparently it was mentioned uh, that this was supposed to be like the Tommy was supposed to be Tommy Doyle and this was supposed to be Lindsay Wallace. But because she was not credited with a last name, there was a mistake in the credits. On IMDb, there's no last name. It's not Lindsay Wallace. And so that might have been the intention of the writer. It might have been the intention of the filmmaker. And maybe in the filmmaker's mind, that's true. And... I can understand that now that it's it's that piece of trivia that's out there now because of the internet and social media and all that kind of stuff. And now we we you know we can discover these things. But you don't watch Halloween knowing that that's who those two are. Nowhere within inside the narrative is it communicated to you that oh that's that Lindsay, oh that's that Tommy. I don't know where the hell I was going with this now. Oh right 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 right. I don't know. Um, so I don't ever watch Halloween 4. I don't ever watch Halloween 4. And when it gets to that moment, I'm like, ah, oh, there's Lindsay Wallace. Now, I know it's not Kyle Richards. I know. But even an emotional attachment to the character, I'm like, it's just a Lindsay. It's just a Lindsay. And that's just a Tommy. You know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they were just called Lindsay and Tommy as just a tribute to the two characters from the first movie. Now, the age does match because it's 10 years later. So the age does match. If they're 10, then they're like, or if they're eight, then they're 18. Now, totally matches, totally works. But nowhere within the narrative are we tipped off to that. So, I, you know, I don't find it cool or anything. It's just, you know. I mean, at the very least, if if that's what you wanted to communicate to your audience, that this is Lindsay Wallace, there should have been something that communicated that to us. Like she said something like, uh, uh, well, you know, like in the car before they go get ice cream. You remember Lindsay, don't you? Yeah, hi kiddo. Oh, I just don't like the bullies and it's all about blah, blah, blah. And Lindsay says something like, well, you know, I understand, you know, when I was your age, uh, you know, your, your mom, or mention something about her mom used to babysit her. Something like that. You know, you know, your mom was really special. Did you know that she used to babysit me and Tommy? Like something like that. Just, even if it's just a little bit of a throwaway line, at least it communicates, oh, oh, that's oh, fucking cool. That's cool. But anyway, <laughs> I'm really going hard into the paint here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh... Marion says, I don't think actors should go if they're going to be weird about it. Uh, you're talking about the, the conventions? I'm assuming you're talking about the conventions. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's not for everybody, right? You know, um, it's not for everybody, you know? Um, and it can be exhausting too. Like it can be, I mean, you know, you're, you're constantly on, right? You have to be on and you're meeting different people and you're talking and, um, you know, it can be tiring. Um, but 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, we'll go. We'll go. Uh, we'll go a little bit longer. We'll go a little bit longer. Have I missed any other super chats? I don't think I have. I just want to make sure here. I don't believe I have. Uh, I don't think so. So anyway. Okay. Um, let me see. Ralph says, well, I hope I have a good experience meeting Nev Campbell at the city con in December. Always have had, uh, been a huge fan of hers. I, I, I'm sure you will. Nev, she's a good Canadian gal. Um, by everything I've heard, she's, you know, very nice. I, I don't think you're going to have any issues with her. You know, it depends on what your expectations are, right? You know, I mean, for a lot of people, I think it's, it's, you know, you have to always remember, and this goes for anybody, that um, I was sort of talking a bit about this kind of the other day. You know, there's with when it comes to you know celebrities. I mean, I mean, there's a there's a they're often, and I'm not talking about anybody specific. I'm not talking about you. I just mean in a general sense, right? Um, because we've heard stories, right? We've heard stories of, of, of mean, you know, like don't meet your heroes, right? I mean, there's a saying for that for a reason. And there's absolutely times where it's the, it's the actor or the singer or, you know, or whoever, the well-known personality is just a dick. It's a fucking dick and they're just a dick and it sucks. Oh, damn, you know? Um, and then sometimes maybe it isn't that they're a dick. It's the fact that, the person going up to them, wherever that is, whether it's out in public, whether it's at a convention, is just too overzealous. They're just, their expectations are just way too high. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's just always something to keep in mind that, you know, it is a one-sided relationship. You know, you know they exist, they have no idea who you are, and they don't know you exist at all. And so when you come up to the table, you know, they, they don't know. I mean, you might have been waiting for this moment for the last 20 years, but they have no idea about it right? So I would always say that, you know, you just, you know, you go up with just realistic expectations that you're not going to be, you know, they're not going to, I mean, again, it, it, it depends, right? You know, but just to have the realistic expectations, it's like, it's like, um, because I have heard from some people, I don't know who this was, but I've heard from some people in the past, like, yeah, no, 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 it was fun to meet them, but, you know, I didn't really have a chance to do much, and, you know, I just want to, because some, sometimes, sometimes what ends up happening, and this depends on the individual, is that they've been waiting for this moment their whole lives, and they have all this built up, like they want to express how much they love them. And oh my God, I've been watching so much. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I just was a little kid. I was a little kid. I just, you mean so much to me. I just, oh my God, thank you. There are people that are like that, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's real. That's true. You know, and they mean well. Um, but it can be overwhelming to the other individual because, again, they don't know you exist. That you're just, oh my God, you know, oh my God. It's like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you're going to do that. Again, I'm not talking about you. I just mean that in a general sense, we see different types. Like, it falls on both sides. There are celebrities that can be absolute assholes and dicks, and there are fans that can be, um, that really put the fanatic into fan. And uh, you just have to have realistic expectations. You know, I know there's some people that have been disappointed by their interactions and it's not that anything bad happened. It's just that it was one-sided. Do you know what I mean? So depending on who the celebrity is, sometimes it can be a situation where, you know, you go up to them and you're like, oh, hi, you know, I just want to say, you know, I'm a big fan and, you know, whatever. And, you know, I really like, and you're just, oh my, you're just, you're, you're fucking glowing, right? And they're there and they're signing and they're like, oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. So to, what is it? To, to John. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. You want a selfie? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. It's just very business. You know, it's very business. It's cordial, but it's business. Um, and some people are like that, right? And then it feels very like, yeah, I met them, but, eh, you know, because it wasn't as, hey, what's going on? You know, and you're like, ah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so some people can be like that. Some people can be like that, um, you know, but I always think it's a good idea that if you are somebody, and I, I'm somebody that isn't like this, but if you are somebody that that is really excited about meeting your favorite actor or actress or singer and you're going to a convention, just kind of just know that that it's, you know, depending on who the person is, depending on the personality, depending on the line, depending on how they, you know what I mean? It, you, you just kind of have it, it it's going to be, at the end of the day, it's a business transaction, right? You know, and exchange a couple of words. Hey man, just want to, or, you know, you know, 
in the case of Nev, I just want to say I'm a big fan. Love your work. You're amazing. And she'll be like, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, but I've, I've spoken to people who, uh, you know, who are just crazy, you know what I mean? And then it doesn't, it doesn't match, you know, and then they walk away feeling disappointed. But in reality, there wasn't really anything disappointing about the exchange. It was just not what they thought it was going to be. Again, I'm not talking about you. I'm just speaking in general, but yeah, no, I, Hey man, have a good time. Have a good time. If you remember, uh, if you remember a good icebreaker would be, so you're from Guelph, Ontario. She was born in Guelph, Ontario, which is only about 30 minutes from me. So uh, remember that, if you don't remember that. But try to remember that. Um, hey, Darren from the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast, folks. Again, I talked about this uh, earlier, but if you haven't uh, watched uh, their interview with Christopher Nelson, it is on their channel right now. Head over to the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast. Subscribe to them. You're going to thank me later. Sincerely, you're going to thank me later. Great content, the best and worst stuff. Every now and then I show up on there too. Uh, so check them out. They have a great interview on there as of today with Christopher Nelson. They dive into a lot of stuff. They talk about Halloween. They talk about the Exodus Believer. They talk about his career. It was a great episode. I watched it this afternoon. So uh, make sure you go over and, and subscribe to them. Darren, feel free to pop a, a link to your channel into the chat uh, as well. All right, we'll go another another 10 minutes. We'll go another 10 minutes. We'll take this thing to two hours. We'll take this thing to two hours. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Um, <laughs> where's all the mods tonight? Not modding, not modding. They, 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 I gave them the night off. What are you doing here? What the hell are you doing? No, no, no. <laughs> um uh, let me see here oh we got a member chat comes in from sweet tea sends in a member chat the tea uh no wait a minute oh yeah 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 the tea is sweet tonight uh sweet tea has been a member for two months thank you very much that's why you got the the victoria miro as sam uh from it's me billy on there which is great which is great Jared Whitmore says, Dave McRae is my boyfriend. <laughs> In your dreams, Jared. <laughs> Tiger Man says, I wish I could have met Robert Englund because my uncle was in a movie with him. Uh, that's really cool, dude. What, what movie was it? That's really awesome. Yeah, you know, I wish I could have uh, spoken to him. When I got my photo taken with him, with Miko and Cecil at Mad Monster in July, there's an example where it's just like, there's so many people, it's in and out. There's no time for pleasantries. There's no time for, hey, I just want to say that my favorite thing, there's no time for, literally. Like we we went in, we're like, see ya. And we left. Like it's literally, they have to keep doing that. I think they probably have to do that, especially with Robert, because he is so much of a talker. He's like me. I mean, I, I mean, he, he, blah, 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 blah. and of course I have the gift of the, blah, 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 blah. so, um, but I imagine with Robert, they, they, they know that about him and because he's so nice and he's so professional and he loves his fans, he would probably sit there for five or 10 minutes talking to you. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, but there's so many people. There were so many people that were lined up. They just got to, you know, they got ushered through. Sweet Tea says, for the channel, my friend, be safe too. Thank you very much, Sweet Tea. The tea is sweet tonight. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Yeah, there's the link right there, folks. The Slaughtered Lamb just put the link to their... Uh, channel in the uh in the comment in the uh chat room go and check them out like i said if you haven't heard of them if you don't know what they are frank and darren frank Riker and darren they are uh mods here on my channel but they also have their own channel and uh it would be great to get them up to i think they're closing in on six thousand subs five and a half thousand something like that it'd be great to get them up to ten thousand that would be amazing to get them up to ten thousand and they got great content great content you're gonna thank me later trust me you're gonna thank me later just awesome awesome stuff um, let me see here. Uh, just scrolling back. Okay, I've got all the super chats, right? I haven't missed any. I just want to make sure I haven't missed any. I don't believe I have. I don't believe I have. I just want to make sure that I don't believe I have. No, 
no, no, no, no. Okay. And don't forget, folks, if you want to become a member here on the channel, uh, feel free to click the link at the top of the chat. There's a, a the, there's a pinned, uh, a pinned post at the top of the chat room to my channel membership. And, uh, there's two tiers. So check out which one might uh, suit you. Um, but you'll notice that some of the members, uh, in the chat room here have, uh, their names highlighted with badges beside them. You get exclusive emojis. Um, if you become a part of level number two, you get access to exclusive shows like horror movie nights, which is a watch along party exclusive to level number two members. One good scare, the Halloween only show. So if you want to talk more Halloween, we're doing it this Sunday at 2 PM Eastern or 1 PM Eastern one or two. I can't remember now. Um, we're doing it. It's the Halloween only show where we don't have to feel guilty talking about the same things over and over again. Uh, and then of course, um, so those are the two shows that are exclusive to level number two. But if you, but if you become a part of level number one, you'll, you'll get access to the, uh, member only Q and A's as well and things like that and giveaways and polls and all that kind of stuff. So check it out. We're trying to grow it. I think we're at like 93 or 94 members. I'd love to get to a hundred members by Halloween. I mean, we're only seven members away. That would be awesome to get to a hundred by Halloween. If we can't get to a hundred by Halloween, at least by the end of the year, I think that would be really cool. And you get your name on a member card as well, which is, uh, at the beginning of every live stream and video that I do. Um, as well. So uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, we're trying to build the community here and, uh, you know, make something make something of it. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if that interests you. And we have a lot of fun over in member-only shows. Let me just tell you, it's a lot of fun. It's where we can uh, let our hair down. We can let our hair down over there. Um... Uh, Dave says, I tried to see your Evil Dead Rise stream, but can't find it, assuming I need to be member for another month. No, so are you a mem Are you part of le uh, level number one or two? Because what ended up happening with that is, are you part of level number two or one? It, if you're part of level number one, you have to be part of level number two in order to get access to the horror movie night stream. Uh, level number one, uh, they don't have it have access to it, I mean. Jared Whitmore says, Dave McRae is the GOAT. Bah, 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 bah. That's like a lamb, though. Bah, 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 bah. It's, it's, it's a little kid. Bah. And there's a teenager. Bah. And there's a full-fledged adult. Bah, bah. <laughs> See, we have a whole family. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> oh my good slaughtered lamb says i have too much hair it's funny you should see i have photo i you, you'd said you got big hair back in the i have bit i have my, my hair can get like that too it's crazy it's crazy sebastian says oh okay i'm level number one yeah you have to be part of level number two level number two so if you're part of level number two you get access to horror movie nights and access to uh one good scare if you're part of level number two, you get access to everything with level number one. I might do another level as well, but again, when I moved, when I shut down my Patreon and moved everything over, I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. So I wanted to start off small. This is easy to manage. We're doing these shows once a month to start. I think things will get a little easier for me and I can begin to expand once the Billy is kind of, you know, It's Me Billy Chapter 2 is in the rearview mirror. I think then I can, you know, do more because I'll have more time. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. It's fun. I mean, we've got 93 people so far. I would love to get to 100. So if you want to become a member, click the link at the top of the chat. It's also in the description. Uh, and become a member and hang out with us. And it's, I mean, you just, you know, you try it out for a month. If you don't like it, well, then you can leave. It's, you, know, it's, you know, it's not like you're locked in for, you know, a year. Come and try it out. Hang out with us. Have some fun. And maybe you'll stay. It's a lot of fun. And you support the channel as well, which is great. Um, all right, five more minutes, folks. Five more minutes left in this show. I think this has been a good show today. I think this was a good episode. I think this was a good episode. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think this was a good episode. I think this was a good episode. All right. Um, oh, the sweet tea. Yes, I got that one. Let me go back here and see if I can get a few other people. Um... Chester Franklin Jr. says, Dave, hope you were well. I watched your Halloween 2009 video. Uh, which Myers did you have on also, I, 
Halloween 2009 video with Myers, did you had also, I will have my 1978 Myers mask delivered. Can't wait to be Michael Myers from 78 Halloween day. Yeah, so you must be talking about when I dressed up as Michael Myers for Halloween. Yeah, that's old. I mean, that's what, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's 14 years ago now. Um, yeah, those were fun. Those were fun. Uh, I can't wait. You have to take pictures and share it on social media, Chester. You have to share that on social media, if you're on social media, that is. That's awesome. Can't wait to see it. Um, all right. Well, this looks like maybe this is a good time. This is a good time. I can feel the chat winding down. Things are slowing down. So this is a good time. So that's going to do it, folks. That's going to do it for this episode of McRae Live. Thank you to my amazing moderators, Frank Riker, Tabitha Short, Darren Sands, Chris Baber, Cody Snyder, and Andrew Stevens. Even though it's just Darren in the chat room tonight, but thank you for doing what you all do. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to all the Super Chat questions that came in today. Thank you to my channel members as well. Let's see if we can get to 100. I'd love to get to 100 before Halloween. That would be awesome. It's only like seven or six more to go. Um, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. And um, I will see my level two members on Sunday for episode two of One Good Scare. That's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I will talk to you all soon soon. If you want to follow me on social media and you're not following me on social media, there are my links right there. Facebook, Twitter, I guess it's X. I, I got to change that to X. Facebook, X, Instagram. The links are also in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. That's going to do it for me. I will talk to you all soon. In the meantime, and in between time, cheers. <laughs>